HTML, CSS, of course, isn't really a language, but you know, we'll throw that in. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Java, C, C Sharp, Python, um, and I guess we can count ActionScript since it's in there. And the newest one that I also know and I learned recently earlier this year is Solidity. And that one is um, for building smart contracts for your NFTs. So I am well-versed, as you can see, that is 10 um, languages that I have learned. So I have a lot of experience as far as how to study and how to learn new languages. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tech with Joanne. I'm Joanne, and in today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Typically, I'm showing you guys um, open tech positions, or I'm showing you how to uh, how to accomplish something um, specifically on a platform or something like that. I just wanted to switch it up a little bit and bring you guys a different type of video. In today's video, I'm specifically going to be speaking about how to study your code, um, how to get better at coding via studying and your studying practices and just different things that I have done over the years to learn all of the languages that I know and just giving you pretty much some study tips. All right, so a little bit about me, for those of you that don't know, I am a web dev, so I do front end and I do back end, so I'm considered full stack. Uh, so I write different programming languages as well as, of course, the core web languages. So I do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Java, C, C Sharp, um, and what else? And some outdated ones. I remember when I was first um, learning languages, I was learning PHP first. And I remember we learned ActionScript as well. So I have ActionScript just rolling around in my head randomly. And if you don't know what ActionScript is, that's the scripting language that we used to use to uh, program animations for Flash, Adobe Flash, which, you know, no longer is in use. Um, so yeah, I have all of those programming languages and the core web dev languages in my head. So how many is that? Let's see. HTML, CSS, of course, isn't really a language, but you know, we'll throw that in. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Java, C, C Sharp, Python, um, and I guess we can count ActionScript since it's in there. And the newest one that I also know and I learned recently earlier this year is Solidity. And that one is um, for building smart contracts for your NFTs. So I am well-versed, as you can see, that is 10 um, languages that I have learned. So I have a lot of experience as far as how to study and how to learn new languages. So I would consider myself an expert in studying languages at this point. Um, some I use very often, some I use less, but ultimately the information is still up there and it's up there because I have very specific study practices. It's what I do every single time I'm learning a new language without fail. All right, so let's jump right into my study tips, I guess is what I would call this, my study tips for uh, learning a new coding language. All right, so number one is what I do is I always, always, always pick the right course. That is super crucial. It's very important when you're learning is to, you have to start out with the right course. And when I say pick the right course, I mean, go ahead, do a little bit of research, um, read through the course, see what the modules are, see what the lessons are, um, just see if it is number one, incorporating all of the things that you want to learn. So you should do a little bit of research on the language that you're trying to learn, you know, but once you've done that and you know what the core of that language is, then you can go through the course um, lessons and you can see exactly how detailed it is and you can you can determine if it will fit your learning style. So specifically for me, I don't like taking courses that's like 11 hours long or something like that. I know my attention span and it definitely needs work. Um, so I don't pick courses that nine times out of 10, 
I'm not going to finish anyway. And I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to um, selecting a course or studying online. Um, this is definitely doesn't apply to people who are actually in school um, for a specific thing, because of course you, you, although you can read through the course that courses that are available, most of them are pretty much going to be similar. Um, but this is really for my people who are learning on their own. All right. So all of these things helped me to learn on my own. So picking the correct course really helped me. Um, like I was saying, I do not like courses that are super, super long courses that nine times out of 10, I'm not going to finish. So I'm only going to know like <laughs> the first two parts of the language. So you want to make sure that you are picking a course that fits your learning style. Um, if you're someone who really likes super in-depth, detailed courses, then definitely that's for you. If you're someone like me that is a huge self-learner, so when it comes to me picking a course, I want something that isn't too, too long, something that covers the core of the language. I don't need like a ton of like um, practice tests in there or a ton of like... Um, what do you call it? Things that your practice builds or anything like that. I don't need a bunch of those in there. Maybe like one or two or something like that. But I've seen courses where literally it's like 100 coding problems. And I'm like, baby, I'm not even going to get through five of those <laughs> within the span of this course. So I don't need courses like that. I just need courses that are teaching me the core of the language so that I can get that information. And then when it comes to practicing and building, which I'll touch on later, that's something that I can do on my own. I don't necessarily need that inside of the course. So that's my first tip is definitely selecting the correct course for you based on your learning style, your attention, your ability to pay attention, and also how much time do you have free? Like you may not even have a ton of free time to like go through hours and hours and hours and more hours of a specific course. So maybe a shorter course is for you. Um, so definitely pay attention to all of those things when you are selecting a course, because having the right course is literally, that's the foundation of learning the specific language that you're trying to learn. Okay, so tip number two for studying is for me, and this is very important, I watch the course all the way through from start to finish all the way through as if I'm watching a TV show or as if I'm watching a movie. Now, if you don't take anything else away from this video, take this tip. Trust me when I tell you this is the... I would say that this part is literally how I'm able to retain um, the languages that I'm able to retain so quickly and how I'm able to keep them inside of my brain and pretty much memorize them, right? Because it's all about memory. Um, and then later on you want to do, but first you want to watch. And I always say that because when it comes to learning something new, if you don't know how to do the thing, you can't just dive into doing it. You have to watch it you have to listen and you have to pay attention and you have to really intake that information. So what I do is before I don't write the code, um, I know in the courses they're telling you download this, um, open up this program. Um, they're giving you like code that you need to write and like follow along. I don't do any of that. The reason why is because like I said, I like to watch and listen first because as I'm watching and as I'm listening to what it is that they're doing, like I'm seeing what they're doing, I'm hearing them explain why they're doing what they're doing. I'm learning the language and retaining the information so much better than when it's like pause and stop, pause and stop, pause and stop. You're watching for a little bit and then you're stopping because you need to type the code out of what they just said or you need to write down a note of what they just said. All of that pause and stop and those breaks inside of your brain it kind of doesn't really help you retain the information as much. You have to keep going back and rewinding and replaying parts or maybe you got distracted and something something is like interrupting you or things like that. All of those breaks, it really makes it difficult for you to memorize what it is that you just saw. Think about if you're watching your favorite movie, right? 
you've probably seen your favorite movie all the way through a million times and you can quote those lines like as if you wrote the script yourself why because you remember it from watching it and from hearing it first you that's how you learn like you don't learn necessarily from doing you get better at something that you've learned from doing but you learn by actually seeing the information by hearing the information and a lot of times also by reading the information again i'll get into that, to that a little bit later but for right now what i do is i watch the course all the way through go ahead and get yourself a snack depending on how long the course is and that's another reason why i personally like shorter courses because because of this second step that i always do because i watch it through from start to finish I'm not about to sit and watch a seven hour course from start to finish, obviously. But if it's a two and a half hour course or a three hour course, that's definitely something that I can actually watch in one day and I can actually repeat it the next day. So I really like watching the course through, seeing what it is that the person is doing, really learning those core parts of the language and really in taking that information that I'm seeing on the screen and that I'm hearing and really listening to the reasons why um, certain syntax is in the language that it is. So these are things that I'm really paying attention to. So watching the course all the way through, I feel as though it is honestly my trick that I'm now showing, sharing with you guys. And it's definitely like the ace. You are going to learn so much faster when you do this today. Okay. Right. So after I've watched the course all the way through, my next tip, study tip number three, is that's when I actually get into the taking notes part. Um, I've, I've seen what they've done. I have a general understanding now of what's happening inside of this language. Because I feel like that's super important. When you're taking notes and you're completely clueless, it's just writing Sanskrit at that point. It's like if I stepped into a class um, for like wanting to become a doctor, a medical course or something like that. And I have no understanding of medicine and all of a sudden I'm just like taking notes. I'm literally just like, I might as well be writing in another language. Even though my notes are in English, I don't understand any of what I'm writing. And it's so hard to like watch and take notes and your brain hasn't really connected the, the dots very well so you're sort of just scribbling what the person's saying but you're not really understanding so then you're gonna have to go back and do it over and over and over again and like really you know go over your notes over and over again so when i take notes i've already watched it all the way through several times sometimes um so by the time i get to the note taking stage i have an understanding of what each thing is and why it's there the importance of it so when i'm taking these notes and now when i'm actually moving over to my um text editor i usually use um vs code when i'm moving over to that stage and now i'm actually starting to write the code that they're giving me inside of the course the practice code i now have a better understanding of that so now when i'm taking notes it's all clear to me. My brain has already begun to connect the dots. So now my note taking is more useful. Have you ever looked back at your notes from something that you've done and you're like, what was I talking about? And you clearly have no clue what your notes are even talking about. And that's because when you were taking the notes, you had no real understanding of what it is that you were writing. I feel as though because I've watched it already, when I get to this note taking stage, my notes are so much more clear. I understand everything that I've written and everything that I've written just makes perfect sense to me now. So it's like I have really clear notes and I love to just like grab a notebook. I have a ton of notebooks literally. So I'll just grab a notebook and I'll just like write down the core um, parts of the language, just like anything that I feel as though needs to be highlighted so that when it's time for me to actually begin to study more and more, study the language more, I don't necessarily have to go back to the course. At that point, I can just go back to my notes because now I have an understanding of what it is that I saw and what it is that I wrote. So taking clear notes is super important when it comes to studying and really having a good grasp on the language that it is that you're learning. Okay, so study tip number four is books. As you can see, 
I really love books. I love to read for fun and also to learn. I am a huge reader. And I mentioned earlier that that is the other way that you learn something. You learn by watching, you learn by listening, you learn by reading. So reading is such a huge way to actually retain that information. And the reason why I like to have a book to supplement the language that I'm learning is because I like shorter courses. So I like courses that really give me just like the core of the language, the building blocks, that foundation of the language, so that I can really begin to, to see that and to understand it. But when I like to, when I pick up a book, it's a little bit different. So I already have that understanding of the core language and I'm already there, I'm already understanding it. I can pretty much start to write the language already. A book just takes it 10 steps further. So I've already learned the basics of the language. Now when I pick up a book, I can actually dig deeper into that language because the book nine times out of 10 is going to have more things about that language that you didn't necessarily learn in a course. Like literally, you can't put everything about a language inside of a course. That course would be super, super long. So putting it inside of a really nice book is a great way for you to actually build upon those skills and really just start studying that language even more and getting a deeper understanding of it. All right, so let's just dig into some of the books that I have. Um, so these are just a few. So I have, when I was learning Java, I, I used this book. This one is um, Java in Easy Steps. So this one was definitely helpful. Let's see, what else do I have here? Um, when I was learning PHP, I have this one, PHP, MySQL and Apache all in one. And as you can see, this is a thickums, okay? This book is big, all right? She's thick. So definitely very useful because again, imagine all of this inside of a course, baby, no. Mm -mm. But in a book, I get to read through it. I get to take my time. I get to take notes even more. I get to highlight certain points. Like a book just really solidifies and builds upon that knowledge that the course already gave me. So studying using a book is definitely highly recommended. Let's see what else I have. Um, I have a few more here. I have JavaScript for the World Wide Web. This is... And then I have a smaller version of it as well. So I have these books. I have a few more around, but you get the point. Definitely, whatever language you are using, go ahead and get a book about that language because now that you've got an understanding of it and you can actually begin to write it, really just studying and reading through that book and just like going along with the book really definitely helps you begin to open up and expand on what it is that you've already learned inside of that course. So that's what I always do. That's my fourth tip is I always typically get a book that pairs with a course when I'm studying. My last tip, tip number five is practice. Practice, practice, practice. That is my last study tip. Now that we have a full understanding of the language, we are, we can pretty much build some decent projects at this point. We can write the language. Now you just need to Build as much as you can. Use the language as much as you can because now using the language begins to flex that muscle. It begins to bring everything that you learned back to your memory and you really get better. How do you get, become a better coder? You become a better coder by coding. All right. Now that we have learned the language, now we need to implement that language. And it's plus, if we're not using that language, it's super easy for us to forget. Like it's it's definitely easy to forget something that you've learned um, that you haven't really been using regularly. So maybe you're in a particular job and maybe you don't use that language within your job, but you're learning it just for fun. Like me, most of the languages that I've learned, I've learned just because I actually enjoy learning new programming languages like a complete geek. Um, but I don't use those languages for work. I just use them for fun. So I like to build different projects using those languages just so I don't forget them and just so that I can become better and better at that specific language. Of course, there's some that I'm better at than others, which is, you know, typical. You can't be a genius at it all. Well, you could. 
I'm working my way to it. Um, but definitely it's better to just after you've done all of that and now you're really wanting to uh, get in there and learn more and really boost your studying. Uh, definitely the way to do it is by practicing, writing the code, building different projects. And before you know it, like you've learned it, you've got it. And you're just going to become better and better and better at this code. And so where you're now solving problems easier and quicker and you just know the solutions that you yourself want to use because again when you're doing a programming language there's so many ways that you can solve problems and you can come up with solutions right but you want to know what your style is what is it that you like about the language what different parts of it do you enjoy and what's your coding style so these are things that you actually begin to learn and develop the more you actually code. So that's my last tip for studying and learning this this language and be getting better at a new language. Definitely practice the language and build as much as you can. All right, guys, that's the end. I've given my five tips for studying, uh, getting better at coding, whatever it is that you want to call this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment. If you have any questions whatsoever, definitely leave a comment and I will do my best to double back and answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, subscribe, okay? I need you guys, all right? So definitely subscribe to my channel. I am bringing you more videos um, as much as I can. I have been lacking a little bit because I was sick. Um, but now that I'm back, I'm going to do my best to, you know, upload regularly. But subscribe to my channel so that you can get more, you know, fun tech videos. I do bring you videos with open tech positions. So for those of you who are looking for tech jobs, definitely check out some of my previous videos that I have with some open tech positions um, and some other tech videos that I have coming up and planned in the pipeline. So definitely subscribe to my channel so that you can actually see those videos. Turn on that notification so that you can get notifications for when I post. All right. And give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like if these study tips have helped you um, to be able to find some kind of way that maybe you can learn a language easier, then definitely give this video a thumbs up, okay? Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.